since 2003. This is the Sports Source. East Tennessee's number one sports talk show. Presented by Hype Wrench, and by Junk Be Gone, and by the Garza Law Firm. With your host, John Pennington. The Sports Source starts now. Good Sunday morning. Welcome into the Junk Be Gone studios for today's episode of the Sports Source. We appreciate you being with us. I guess you're as stir crazy as most of my guys are. Uh, so thanks for joining us today. We'll see if we can't get your mind off the, uh, the cold weather and warm things up with some good Tennessee talk. And there's plenty to go around. Uh, Tennessee with a big whooping on Alabama yesterday in basketball. Almost as big a whooping as the transfer portal is putting on the Alabama football program. We'll cover both of those things and a lot more. Matter of fact, let me go ahead and show you what we're going to be covering today. Let's just get right into this thing. We're going to be talking about takeaways from yesterday's win. We're going to talk about Dalton Connect's spot in UT history. Over the last 20 years, where does he rank with some of the great names? And, and we'll show you some of those names, some of whom I had already forgotten when I saw the, when I saw the names. Uh, we'll look at Tennessee's top lineups by the numbers, which is kind of interesting. See if there's anything that pops there. Mark Pankratz is going to do a Vanderbilt scouting report for us. Football recruiting update, uh, we'll get into that. Uh, improved offensive weapons, we'll look at this year versus last year's guys. Transfer portal chaos. We got a couple of VFLs out here. We're going to ask them if these rules had been in place when they were at UT, would they have transferred? We'll also talk about Tennessee making bank. Danny White is just making it rain over there. And we'll get your take on all this NIL transfer portal stuff. So we got a lot to do. First segment of today's show brought to you by Junk Be Gone. And I have a feeling when the snow and ice finally melt this week and more rains come for five straight days, uh, there's going to be a lot of wet, crushed, ruined, damaged items that folks will want to get rid of from their yards and unfortunately their houses if you've had damage done. If that sounds like you, do what I do. Call Junk Be Gone. No one in America makes it easier for you to clean up a mess than Junk Be Gone. JunkBeGone.biz to learn more. All right. We have six guys who've braved the weather today. Uh, three are waiting to get out here. But we open with these two guys beside me. We've got Josh Ward right here. We've got former Vol uh, assistant coach Mark Pankratz right here. Of course, he was a D1 basketball player at Milwaukee as well. Uh, I got that right, right? That mm -hmm. didn't sound yeah. right coming out of there. Yeah. It's because it used to be University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee. Wisconsin, yeah. yeah, it still stumbles, it trips me up. All right, uh, as we always start off, I want to get these guys' top takeaways from the game. Vols win 91-71 at Thompson Bowling Arena yesterday. Uh, it's going to be a while before I start saying Food City Center. Uh, but huge win over Alabama. Uh, according to Ken Pomeroy, that's the number two defense in America, uh, Tennessee, versus what was the number one offense in America and Alabama. And the check went to the defense. Mark, your takeaways. Well, you can start with a lot of different players stepped up yesterday. Jonas Adu, uh, Meshack, when you talk about defense. Uh, obviously, we're going to talk a lot about Dalton Connect today. Yeah. Um, but one of the things that, that I see now is, is with this coaching staff, They've, they've evolved offensively. You look at their last five games, including yesterday, they've run more ball screen offense than they have ever before under a Barnes offense. And so they've evolved getting that center ball screen with Adu's athleticism and be able to knock down jump shots and then to be able to take his time if he gets the ball in the post. Um, so the coaching staff has, has really evolved on the offensive end, um, which is leading to better offensive efficiency. Which is something that, uh, hey, credit to them. Because we spent all last year and a lot of the year before wondering, okay, have they just gone defensive mad here? Have they lost their minds? This suggests that they were either doing what they had to do to win. It's like, we don't have the offensive weapons. We've got to play this kind of defense to win. Or if it was the other, they just went defensive mad. They've now realized, we went defense crazy. we got to have some offense here. So kudos to the coaching staff for being able to shake it up. And it's not like you've got a 25-year-old coach out there. You've got a guy who's been doing it for a while. And his ability to shake it up, I think, is a big positive. Josh, top takeaways from yesterday's game. Yeah, so the offense deserves all kinds of attention, and we're going to give more to it. I think the fact that they put up 91 points and they're playing the way they are offensively, but they made life so difficult for Alabama's top offense in the country coming into the game. Uh, and that goes throughout the team. That's, that's the starters. That's Jemai Meshack, who plays starters' minutes and plays the starters' role, essentially, coming off the bench. But what they are collectively, as they've developed offensively, the mindset that Rick Barnes requires defensively has not changed. That's for the guys that came back. That's for the guys that came in. Hey, the, the thing about it is, is with Tennessee's offense, they would do some ball screen action to get their post player 
into having a guard connect or Ziggler off the, mm. off the dribble. When you do that with Tennessee and you're putting Adu, we're going to talk about Adu offensively, but Adu in ball screen defense is one of the best that I've seen from, from a big. And then you got, and look, if you're, going to, if you're going to cast any blame or improvement, you know, Josiah's got to improve offensively. But defensively, same thing. Ball screen offense, you're able to switch with Josiah and keep guys in front of you and contest jump shots. That's the difference for us on the defensive end. Got a nice little boost yesterday from uh, Jordan Ganey coming out there with uh, 15 points. He has been uh, struggling uh, of late. So that was another little bonus that was uh, a help to Tennessee. Let's go ahead as we continue to talk here. Let's go ahead and put up the box score, and we're going to show you the shot charts. You'll be able to tell the shot charts. One of them is red, which means hot. One of them is blue, which is ice cold. Let's start right there uh, with the defense, and that is – uh, Alabama, four of 21 from three-point range. How much of that you know? You know where I come down on this. It's, they talk about the NBA as a make-miss league. It's just turned into a make-miss sport. If you're hot, you'll win. If you're not, you'll lose. Uh, and so, so often you see a team can't go on. Isaiah Victor talked about it last week. You go on the road. You're not used to those shooting backgrounds. You don't shoot as well. How much of that yesterday are we saying, wow, what defense because Alabama was cold? Or was Alabama cold because of the defense? And I know there's some – mishmash in there, but do we really give all the credit to the defense in there? I, think you, I don't think you can ever give all the credit to the, to the defense, um, but I think the way that we continue to fight through screens, you know, w one of the things that the referees allowed us to do yesterday was be really physical. Getting through screens on their drive into the basket, we were really physical. I, I know Nate Oates was all over the officials on right. that, but when you're that physical, now they're playing their offense even further off of the three-point line which makes them further three-pointers, and now you've got a less likelihood of hitting, hitting those shots. Well, and I mean, Alabama, 22 turnovers mm. yesterday, 22. That's, to me, where you come back to a lot of credit to Tennessee. And at some point, Alabama's probably pressing. They're not sure what to do with the basketball, and Tennessee yeah. has forced that. And there's your shot charts from yesterday, and that's shot charts. Uh, I guess I put two S's on there because there's two of them. <laughs> but Tennessee's is on the left. That shows you the zones where they were hot yesterday, where they were hitting from two, which is interesting. But Alabama cold all over the floor, basically. They're on the right. One other takeaway for me that we didn't have a chance to talk about is, so one way you start attacking a really offensive, proficient guy like Dalton Connect is you saw Alabama really go at Dalton on the offensive end, putting Dalton in ball screens, making him defend trying to get him to wear down, maybe getting some foul trouble, so that way it could affect him on the offensive end and him not be able to shoot the way they did. What happened in the first half? I think he had 15 points, you know, only 10 points in the second half. I think you're going to see more of teams do that with Dalton and really try to make him cover, not because Dalton's not a great defender. He does have to improve in that area. But I think it's more about how do we get him off of his the rhythm that he's on offensively and it's a way to attack them defensively. Let's talk about, and here's the, it's interesting, we really haven't gotten into the fact that Dalton Connect put 25 in yesterday. It's almost at this point a given. Well, Connect got his. Um, well, so he, he, he did hasn't that shooting the poorly score. on the outside. He was one yeah. of six from three. Yeah. And, and he, still got 25 points. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about Jonas Adu. He had the four blocks yesterday, which is kind of, I don't know how, but look, if you're Dikembe Mutombo and you just get five blocks a game, that's one thing. Blocks are kind of one of those stats that to me are, some nights you just have that. You just have that. I don't know that you can count on that. Still, four blocks yesterday, pretty good. But let's look at his offense. Uh, these are his last five games. And in his last five games, Jonas Adu has averaged 16 points and 8.8 .8 rebounds per game. So you couple that with the way Zakai Ziegler had been playing and the way Dalton Connect has been playing. This, <laughs> this team is well. And then you throw in Ganey with 15 points. If you're an opposing coach, I mean, I know everybody's focused on Tennessee's defense, and you've got to get through their defense. But, boy, if you're an opposing coach, trying to stop this team has to be a hell of a challenge right now. Well, what they're doing offensively in the ball screen, and, and he's, yeah. he's being able to get out, knock down a dump, jump shot. Then if he can't get out and jump shot, they're doing a great job of post feeds. And their post feeds, he is deep in that paint. And, and, and it's just different from what Barnes has done in the past of how to get the ball in the post before yeah. it was – a little bit of the rub screen, but you really you're going to use Grant Williams' strength and girth to just post up and be big. They've evolved a little bit, and they do finishing with both hands, soft touch, making free throws. He's been, he's been a difference maker. 
Yeah, they needed more consistency in post-scoring. Olivier was able to give them that at times last season, but we talked about a lot last year. It's not coming often enough. What Adu is able to do in different areas on the floor, the passing is a big deal. It's underrated. You don't pay attention. But if you get the ball where it's supposed to go, then it's more likely you're going to have a high percentage shot. I think that helps with some of their um, perimeter shooting as well. But with Adu, with his ability to score around the basket and extend, that makes him really dangerous, especially with ball screens and guys with the basketball that can make plays too. All right, very good. Uh, when we come back, we're going to bring in another member of our panel, and we'll discuss where Dalton Connect ranks uh, with recent last 20 years vaults. And there's some names on this list. I'm like, oh, yeah, I forgot this guy was good. Uh, so we'll, we'll a little trip down memory lane for the names. We'll see where Connect ranks. I also want to talk about what kind of awards could this guy have in front of him. If he continues to play at the level he's been playing at, are we talking about All-American team for Dalton Connect? What are we talking about SEC Player of the Year? We'll discuss that next. Come on back on the Sports Source.